Have you ever started a story, maybe got halfway through it, realized it was rubbish, tossed it in the old bin? Well, I'm gonna give you three core elements, plus another seven elements, and I'm gonna give you a surefire outline to write a ripping novel. So you wanna start with three things. Number one, I've got a character. Not just an ordinary character, something unique, something special about the character. Could be a character with a lame foot, been done before, but it's something intriguing about that character draws the audience in. But also this character, they're gonna want a strong desire or a goal or face a massive problem in their life. The biggest problem that they could possibly be facing. The biggest challenge or the biggest goal that they're after. Not, oh, someone stole my chicken. Someone stole your chicken could be true. But it's not the biggest thing, not the greatest challenge you've ever faced. But if you're gonna write a story, you're gonna save me father before he dies of alcohol, that could be the biggest challenge that you've ever faced and that could make a good story for a young adult novel how to try and save the family or it could be he wants to save the entire city of Zuha and saving the city of Zuha which is obviously fantasy is the biggest goal the biggest challenge he's got but you want to use the biggest goal the biggest challenge that the character has biggest impact on their life second thing you need is a setting could this be a normal setting it could be like where I am in Melbourne, or it could be somewhere like New York or LA, Paris. It could be a fantasy setting, like in Zuha, whatever I called it before. But you need a setting. If you want to have a, an awesome, awesome setting. What you do is pick something peculiar about it. Say, if it's fantasy, it could have really harsh weather, and that really harsh weather could be, could be a switch, bang, hit by snowstorms, and that affects the characters. So the setting has an impact on the characters. Or it could be like in Pitch Black, in Mr. Vin Diesel, when. The sun's dipped away and it turned black after all this time. Bang! Out came the monsters. The setting had an impact. If you can pick a setting that has an impact, that's even better. But if it doesn't, and it's just part of the setting, say like a young adult novel, you still need to establish the setting and the context around the character. And you may want to start broad. Say it's New York, you say, you know, you're in New York. Or narrow it down to Manhattan. Maybe the suburb, maybe the building block. Maybe even with a little cafe like Central Perk and five friends are sitting and having a coffee. So you start with a big broad scene and you narrow it down and down and down until you narrow it right in on a, camera's, a camera lens and you hone it in on this setting. And that way, even when you're setting the setting, it's keeping the story flowing, keeping it moving because they're seeing New York, they're seeing the suburb, or they're seeing Manhattan, they're seeing the suburb, and they're seeing the building, they're seeing the coffee shop, they're even seeing the couch where the friends sit. So it keeps things moving. And of course, the third thing, I already touched on it, I already said it, but that's the core problem, the goal, what it is the character needs to achieve. A bonus one, a bonus. I usually start sometimes with a charged image, a powerful image. Like in Final Breath, I had the image of a woman running off a burning ship. So if you can start with a charged image, if you're right in Titanic, it could be the ship sinking. It could be Star Wars, it could be a young man looking at a sunset long into something more. But if you can start the charged image, it usually spikes the, sparks the fire, starts your fingers tapping on the keyboard and gets you rolling. Now it could end up different altogether. It may not even be the story that you end up with, but that charged image sparks something in your heart to get you going. But the fourth thing what you want to do is, the character then obviously, you've got to make a push. They've got to go for it. They've got to strive to achieve this goal, to achieve this dream or solve this problem, whatever that may be. Now it could just be they're going to help the drunk father so therefore you're going to set out on a plan to do it okay and he may be sleeping in a boat passed out he's got to make the effort to get there he's going to maybe cook him breakfast in the morning to help him <laughs> this drinking problem that he has fifth part of your story is he's going to fail it's not going to work if it works then it's not strenuous enough it's not hard enough it's not really a tale it hasn't been the toughest thing they've ever done so first thing that's going to happen number five it's got to fail. And not only is it going to fail, it could even make things worse, uh, reveal things about the character, it could deepen the problem, deepen the issue, even change, change the bigger issue. You may realise it's even more involved than a drunk father. The drunk father is actually drunk because he was maybe a former CIA, CIA agent and he was honest and now they're going to bump him off and he's got to stay clear of his family. He's pretty so drunk or they're going to kill everyone. That's how the story changes. Step six, it's all gone downhill. They're going to fail, game over. The CIA are moving in, the crook ones, and they're going to shoot the dad, shoot the son, and they're all going to be gone. But what normally happens here is he digs deep, 
goes in hard, goes in strong, and usually this is where there is character growth. The young boy may have had a problem with always wanting to do things on his own. That was his problem. But in order to win, to help his dad defeat the CIA, he has to realize, I can't do this on my own. I've got to receive help. I've got to be humble. So that's when the character growth comes, and it's usually through that character growth that they overcome the problem. It could be even a belief, like obviously I'm with Luke. He finally trusted the horse. And number six is the glass cast effort when all is lost. But the personality growth, it's the lesson or the belief that something that changes core within them that helps them overcome the victory. And of course the seventh is it's got to have a satisfying conclusion. It could be a story of heartbreak or it could be a story of victory. You may think of 300, King Leonidas. That's heartbreak because he died, but their death in the 300 inspired the rest of Greece to not give in the Xerxes to fight for Sparta and for freedom. It could be his dad made high, but he saves the son, saves the family, or they all may live. He exposes the corrupt, corrupt funds in the CIA and so forth. But it's got to have a satisfying ending. You don't want to read all through these 300 pages of a book and not have a satisfying ending. So there's seven points you can use. Write them down and you can bang out a rough outline, 10 minutes, even less and you can start writing your story. Now obviously, your story will change. Don't quit. Okay, go through it, because that's going to give you a rough guide to work from. Similar to the hero's journey, that starts at home and goes around and comes back into the end. But that's the rough idea to join your fiction, and how to structure your story, how to write a true epic. Now subscribe, share, share it. And if you want to buy Final Breath, Swimming in puddles, just uh, go to Amazon, type in Clint Low, and up they'll come. It's going to take your final breath now and dive in.